Ah, uh, beautiful Gold Beach. Oregon's Onion Belt. It truly is a slightly warmer winter birding destination. The Pacific coast of North America has several endemic species that can't be found anywhere else in the world. There are some special birds here that we should be proud of and do our best to help preserve their habitat. On my trip to Gold Beach, I was able to film four and a half different species that exclusively call the Pacific coast their home. Our first endemic is a very secretive bird with a very narrow range. They are found in coastal scrub and chaparral from the Columbia River down to Baja. Wren tits are heard far more often than seen and will call from deep within bushes. This view, obscured by branches, is fairly typical. I followed this pair of wren tits around my hotel property for two days. In that time, I got about one full minute of non-secretive footage. They seem to love this berry bush, but insects make up the majority of their diet. Wren tits are neither wrens nor tits, but are the only bird in their own special genus, Shamia, Camia, Shamia, Shamwow. They are territorial and non-migratory. They have even been described as the most sedentary species in North America. Rentits form lifelong pair bonds. They even roost together and mutually preen. Cute! Alright, it's bird quiz time. Who's that bird? Its distinctive yellow face with a black party mask over its eyes make us think, maybe this bird is on its way to a masquerade. No way, Nancy. It's a Townsend's Warbler, and they look this beautiful regardless the occasion. The best time to find these little guys at eye level is in the wintertime along the Oregon and California coast. In the summer, they sing and breed in the canopies of coniferous and mixed forests further north and inland. In the winter, they'll come down to shrubs and grass to find tasty bugs to eat. If you're really lucky, they will even visit your bird feeder and eat some delicious suet. Pay no attention to this recharging drone. Let's talk about the second most common bird in North America for a second. The American Robin is a great starter bird for impressing your friends with Latin names. It's easy because it's Turtus migratorius. Turtus migratorius. Don't try the spooky head spin move at home, kids. You'll die. These are omnivorous birds that are also food. Sure, they eat earthworms and berries, but so many other things eat them too. From sharp-shinned hawks to golden eagles, kestrels to jeer falcons, northern pygmy owls to snowy owls. Overall, there are 28 different species of raptors that are known to hunt robins. They are also one of our most prolific breeders. They can produce three successful broods a year. Though only 40% of nests produce young successfully, and only 25% of those fledged survive to November. The entire robin population turns over about every six years. Man, that got a little dark. Let's take a bird break. It's pinniped time. These are Pacific Harbor seals. When a seal exits the water, it's called hauling out. This dock would be a haul out site for this herd of seals. <laughs> Harbor seals spend about half of their time hauled out of their mines. The other half of the time, they're in the water. They can dive up to 1,500 feet for 40 minutes, though their average dive is 3 to 7 minutes in shallow. Pacific Harbor seals like to eat food. Okay, we got a little off track there for a second. Let's regroup. The next three species are special because they are all endemic to the Pacific coast of North America. Hiding on rocks in tidal zones and flipping over stones are two of the favorite pastimes of this little guy, the black turnstone. Remarkable, perhaps, for their geographic isolation. The only other bird in their genus, the ruddy turnstone, 
is found on six continents, but they are remarkably absent in much of the Black Turnstone's central Pacific coast range. The Black Turnstone thrives where the ruddies are rarely seen, hiding among the dark rocks, and we can guess that it's their camouflage that helps them persist in this harsh environment. Another black bird that lives among surf and rocks, though this bird seems to be some weird amalgam. Crow-sized, all-black body, red bill, and weirdly flesh-colored legs. The black oyster catcher is a real delight to watch, and it has a surprisingly low population. In Oregon, there is an approximate 5 to 600 black oyster catchers, and their global population is estimated to be fewer than 11,000. Oyster catchers, I gotta ask, how hard is it to even catch something that is affixed to a rock? Trick question. Despite their name, they don't eat oysters, nor do they even catch them. They forage on a variety of intertidal invertebrates, including mussels, limpets, chitons, crabs, barnacles, and other small creatures. Oyster catchers are often seen hunting in the wave zone, because mussels that are splashed by waves open more frequently. When they find one, they use their chisel-like bills to pry open the shells of their stationary prey to get at the tasty morsels found inside. Yum! You might not know this, but there are more than one kind of gull, and they're not all seagulls. Our Pacific endemic gull is called the Western Gull. It is pretty easy to identify when you are actually at the beach. It's the big one, with the white head and neck, it's got a dark back, and black wingtips with white spots in them. But be careful, western gulls will hybridize with glaucous wing gulls in the north part of their range. These are often referred to as Olympic gulls. When bird watching, it's okay not to know what every kind of bird is. Western gulls can live up to 25 years, but typically live about as long as a pet, cat, or dog. And you should love the gulls in your life as much as you love the pets in your life. And much like dogs and cats, you don't have to know what kind they are to think that they are pretty neat. Trust me. Western gulls are among the larger gulls. They are predators that will eat other birds, similar to hawks, and we love hawks. There is even a western gull in Oakland that is known for eating pigeons. You know who else eats pigeons? Peregrine falcons. I know we love those guys, right? Overall, gulls are super, and we're lucky that we get our own species of gull on the west coast. The western gull is a real good gull, and I love them very much. A few moments later. Gross. Birds really are incredible. And you know what else is incredible? The scenery on the Oregon coast. Please enjoy some Gold Beach Sunset while I say goodbye. Thanks so much for joining me on this bird journey. I'm glad I didn't have to do it alone. Do you think you'd ever go on a trip to the Pacific Coast just to find a rented or a black turnstone? What about just for a western gull? Please leave a comment below and let me know. Also, leave a comment to let me know how much you love gulls now. Is it more? How much more? Leaving comments and giving likes with the thumbs up button helps YouTube recommend my videos and helps my channel. Likes and comments also act as positive reinforcements to inspire me to make more videos. And if you'd like to learn more about birds, or just listen to my voice and look at birds, please subscribe to my channel. Keep your eyes on the skies, friends. Until next time, bird up.